Welcome back to Chemistry. I'm Jeremy Krug and in this video we're going to be learning some more about thermodynamics, especially the first law of thermodynamics. And this is lesson 15 in my complete AP Chemistry course series. So if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you do so. And let's get started. Now when we talk about the first law of thermodynamics, specifically it says that the total energy of an isolated system is constant. So you can transfer energy and you can transform it from one form to another. But as you can see here, energy is neither created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. So that's the law of thermodynamics that we're going to be using in this series of, of videos here in lesson 15. Now, in chemical reactions, energy is constantly being transferred and transformed. And the way that we're going to uh, talk about that is through a process that we call, or a, a system of, of uh, calculations that we call thermochemistry. And this is what the first law of thermodynamics in chemistry is generally going to be about. Now, the first thing that we want to talk about is this concept of enthalpy of formation. Now, enthalpy is kind of a fancy word of saying heat in chemistry, or heat as far as a chemical reaction goes. And when we talk about the enthalpy or the heat of formation, that's the change in heat or the change in enthalpy that occurs when one mole of a substance is formed from the elements that make it up, its component elements. So let me give you an example of that. Here is water. So we can see H2O is water in its gaseous form. And so the enthalpy of formation for water is going to be the enthalpy change, the delta H, that you have when you take you know, one mole of H2, and it's not one mole of O2, it's a half a mole, because you know, there's, only a, there's understood to be a one here for H2O, so it's got to have half of that. And the delta H for that is negative 242 kilojoules per mole. So that's the enthalpy of formation of water. Or here's another example. If we're trying to find the enthalpy of formation of ammonia, NH3, in its gaseous form, well, you have to take half a mole of N2, because uh, nitrogen is the uh, most common, simplest form of nitrogen. And since we have three hydrogens in ammonia, we have to multiply it by three halves H2 to get the three H's. And you're making one mole of NH3. And the delta H for that is the negative 46 kilojoules per mole. So we have to write the equation so that the elements add up to give you exactly one mole of the compound that you're trying to make. So that's why we have sometimes these weird looking fractional exponents, because your product has to have a coefficient of one in front of it. That's enthalpy of formation. So if we have calcium sulfate as another example, well, we have some calcium, so that's you know one calcium. We have S, sulfur, so we have one S. And then we have to end up with four oxygen, so it's two O2s, to get the one mole of calcium sulfate. So the enthalpy of formation of calcium sulfate would be negative 1,435 kilojoules per mole. Now, you might be wondering, you know, what is this, this zero thing here? We may have talked about that in the past, or you may have talked about that in your chemistry course. That little zero looking thing there just signifies that we are at standard conditions. That means that we're carrying these reactions or these uh, processes out at a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. If there's a gas, it's at one atmosphere pressure. If we have any uh, solutions, they're at one mole per liter concentration. That's what that little zero stands for. And as we work our way through the various uh, thermodynamics lessons, you're going to find that that little zero sign pops up quite a bit. So you, now you know what that means. So we can actually take these enthalpies of formation for different compounds and different substances and calculate the delta H of a different reaction from that. So let me tell you what I'm talking about here. I'll show you. So if we take the delta H of a reaction, it's equal to the sum of all the individual enthalpies of formation of the products minus the sum 
of all the enthalpies of formation of the reactant. So let me show you an example of that. Let's say we have a very common reaction here. We're going to take some methane gas, some natural gas, and we're going to react that with oxygen gas to make carbon dioxide gas and water vapor. And I do have the equation balanced, as you can see. So that means we have to find the enthalpies of reaction, or the, the, the enthalpies of formation, rather, for all these substances, and add them up. So CH4 gas, well, I find in the chemical literature that that has an enthalpy of formation of negative 75 kilojoules per mole. And we have one mole of that. There's an understood one to be right there. So multiply it by one, it's still negative 75 kilojoules. Now oxygen is zero. You're going to find that every element in its simplest, most natural state is going to have an enthalpy of formation of zero. That's always going to be the case. So that is something that we can uh, uh, use. Now we have two moles of that, so we have to multiply it by two, but fortunately any number times zero, of course, is still zero. Now carbon dioxide gas, its enthalpy of formation is negative 394 kilojoules per mole approximately and we have one mole of that stuff so you know that's still negative 394 kilojoules and then we have water vapor its enthalpy of formation is negative 242 kilojoules per mole and notice we have two moles of that stuff so we have to multiply it by two and we get negative 484 kilojoules now what do we do with these numbers well the equation says it's the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants. So we're going to take the reactants here. Those add up to get us negative 75 kilojoules. And the products, when you add those two numbers together, you get negative 878 kilojoules. So now we take products minus reactants. So we're going to take the negative 878 minus the negative 75. Now be careful with your signs here. Two negatives make a positive, or at least in math they do. So when you get the total delta H, it's negative 803 kilojoules per mole. Now remember, that negative sign right there means that it is exothermic. We talked about that in the last lesson. If you haven't watched that yet, you might want, to, might want to watch that to see what exothermic means. Exothermic means you put your hand next to it, it feels hot. And if you think about this reaction, that makes sense. Burning methane is a highly exothermic process. So yeah, it makes sense that that's going to be negative delta H. Now, when we look at all these numbers that I just seem to get out of the air, where do those constants come from? You know, the negative 75 kilojoules and the negative 394. We can calculate them experimentally, but in our, in our purpose here in this class, we kind of need to know a nice source for those constants. Well, in your chemistry textbook, or maybe your instructor is going to give you a table that has all these standard enthalpies of formation, and you can just look them up. So that's a nice, easy way to get those. If you look them up in maybe a larger handbook of chemistry and physics or online, you can find a very long list of all these, and that'll help you work your homework problems uh, as you work your way through these. Now let's do another example. Let's say we have this reaction. We're going to have the uh, we're going to calculate the delta H of this reaction. We have two moles of ammonium chloride solid, and that's going to decompose into two moles of ammonia gas and one mole of hydrogen gas and one mole of chlorine gas. And so once again, we're going to need to refer back to that table of standard enthalpies of formation. And we find that the ammonium chloride is about negative 314.4 kilojoules per mole. And notice we have two moles of that stuff. So we have to multiply it by two and we get negative 628.8 kilojoules. So we have that part. Now the ammonia gas, when you look that up, it's about negative 45.9 kilojoules per mole. And we have two of those, so multiply it by two, we get negative 91.8 kilojoules. Then we have hydrogen, which is a natural element in its, most, in its simplest state, so it's going to be zero. And the chart backs that up, just so you know. And we have one mole of that, so that's still zero kilojoules. 
And the same thing for chlorine. It's a simple element, so it's zero, and that's zero. So when we look at the sum of the products and the sum of the reactants, well, there's only one reactant, so that's pretty easy to add up. And the products are pretty easy to add up too. Negative 91.8 kilojoules. And remember, the delta H is products minus reactants, the right side minus the left side. So we take negative 91.8 kilojoules minus negative 628.8 kilojoules. And be careful with the sign again. The two negatives make a positive. And so we're going to get a value, a delta H value of positive 537 kilojoules per mole. So notice this is an endothermic process, and it's a very endothermic process. That means that if you put your hand next to this, it would feel cold. And hopefully that makes sense to us, because when you take a compound that has all these bonds in it, and you're breaking those bonds, it looks like that's pretty much what we're doing here. We're, we're breaking a bunch of chemical bonds, de decomposing the, the compound. It makes sense that we're going to have to invest energy. It's going to absorb energy to break those bonds, like we learned in Lesson 14. Uh, and so uh, that makes sense that this is endothermic. Uh, you know, we'll tend to notice that a lot of uh, decomposition reactions like this will tend to be endothermic. Not all, all the time, but that is something that we have noticed. And so we can do that. Let's try one more example that's a little bit more uh, complex. The delta H of the following reaction is equal to positive 150 kilojoules per mole. Determine the heat of formation of sodium oxide. So that's an interesting uh, question. This time we know the delta H. We're trying to find the heat of formation of this compound right here. Well, it actually works the same way. You know, sodium hydroxide, if we look it up on the table, is about negative 425.9 kilojoules per mole. And we have two moles of that, so we multiply it by two, we get the negative 851.8 kilojoules. Now we don't know what sodium oxide is. That's what we're trying to find in this problem. So let's just call it X. If you don't know what something is, calling it X is usually a pretty good bet. Now there's only one mole of this stuff, so you know of course that's just going to be X kilojoules. Water in its liquid state is about negative 285.8 kilojoules per mole. We only have one mole of that, so it's still negative 285.8. Now remember, delta H is equal to products minus reactants. So we have to sum these up. As you can see here, the, the reactant, there's only one of that, so it's easy to sum up. But the products, you know, it's just X minus 285.8. So that's the, the, the product value. Delta H is products minus reactants. So we just sub that in here. Delta H is positive 150. We know what it is this time. And the products will be X minus 285.8. And it's minus reactants, negative 851.8. Be careful with your signs here and your algebra. And so we get Positive 150 equals X minus 285.8 plus 851.8. We do our uh, arithmetic and our algebra here, add like terms, and then pull this to the other side, and we get that X equals negative 416 kilojoules per mole. And so we can say that the heat of formation of sodium oxide is negative 416 kilojoules per mole. So here we've worked several problems where, where we've calculated delta H from the heat of formation. And now we know what the heat of formation means and where we can look those up. I hope you enjoyed this chemistry video. Hope this is going to help you in your general chemistry class or AP chemistry class. I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching high school and AP chemistry for over 20 years. If you liked my video or at least learned something from it, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to my channel if you'd be so kind as to do so. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again where we can learn some more chemistry. Learn some more chemistry.